In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you what is the difference between a digital and an analog signal, show how the Arduino reads analog values, and finally, I will show you how to read values from a potentiometer. Up until now, you were used to work with high, low, true and false logic signals on the Arduino, for example, to blink a LED. These logical values are nothing more than a signal that can only assume 0 and a max voltage, which in the Arduino Uno is 5 volts. In many boards, the high level is 3.3 volts. Although the Arduino can read and write these, di these digital signals, not all devices work with digital logic. Let's consider a potentiometer, which is a manually adjustable variable resistor that acts as a variable voltage divider. In this example, I'm reading the values from a pot using an oscilloscope. You can control the output voltage of the potentiometer by changing the knob position. As you can see, this is not a logic signal with a high or a low value, but an analog signal that, in this case, can vary from 0 up to almost 5 volts. You probably know a lot of analog components. There are temperature sensors, photoresistors, microphones, potentiometers and many others. How to read analog values? The element that enables an Arduino to read analog values is an ADC, or Analog to Digital Converter. An ADC is a piece of hardware that converts an analog value to a digital value. I'm going to try to explain what an ADC does in the simplest way I can imagine. Here you can see an example of a sine wave that ranges between 0 and 5 volts. The analog signal is continuous in time and it is necessary to convert this into a flow of digital values. In order to do this, we consider a set of time instances in a given interval. This is called sam sampling. In other words, we take a sample from time to time. The number of samples acquired per second is called the sampling rate. In this chart, I'm showing only three samples. The next step is to convert the analog value of each sample into a digital value. Here's how it works. Let's divide our signal into two horizontal sections. For each sample, if its analog value falls into the upper section, it is converted into the digital value 1. But if the value falls in the bottom section, the digital value is 0. Let's convert it. The first sample falls into the upper region, so it's a 1. The second sample falls into the bottom region, so it's a 0. Finally, the value of the last sample falls into the bottom region, which corresponds to the digital value 0. We have just converted an analog signal to a digital one, with a 1-bit accuracy. This process is called quantization. Let's look at the same example, but with 4 regions or 2-bit accuracy. In this example, we can convert a range of infinite analog values from 0 to 5 volts to a range of finite digital values from 0 to 3. Nonetheless, this isn't very precise. If we were to record a microphone input to digital just like this, we wouldn't get studio quality. The more horizontal subdivisions we have, the more accuracy we can have. Finally, the Arduino has a set of functionalities that allow the conversion of analog values to digital ones. It contains a 10-bit ADC with 6 separate inputs. This means you can convert a value between 0 and 5 volts on the Arduino Uno to a digital value that ranges between 0 and 1023. The Arduino also provides a function that interacts with the ADC, the analog read function. Next, I will create a small demonstration on how to use the Arduino's ADC. In this example, I will be reading the analog value of a potentiometer and then print the values in the computer using the Arduino's serial communication. For this demonstration, you will need an Arduino and a potentiometer. Of course, do not forget a breadboard and some wires. Here is the configuration I used. Power and ground go to either sides of the potentiometer, the order doesn't matter. The output of the potentiometer is in the middle, which is what we want to read with the Arduino's ADC. In this example, I'm using the Arduino Mega, but feel free to use any other Arduino since the software is the same for all of them. Now, for the code, let's start with our blank sketch with the setup and loop functions. Start by registering the pin where you connected the pot output to keep the code clean and tidy. Do not forget, this must be an analog pin. Next, initialize the serial component of the Arduino. This is the part that allows the communication with the computer. This will be the next video's topic. For now, Set the serial to a speed of 9600 bits per second. In the loop function, we want to read the value of the ADC each iteration and then print it to the screen. Use the analog read function and indicate which pin to read. Ours is stored in the pot variable. Next, 
we just have to print the value to the screen. To print values from the Arduino, you just have to type serial.print or serial.println. The first one prints a string without breaking a line. The second prints a string and then creates a line break. In this sketch, I will print a string and then the potentiometer value, which is stored in the pot value variable. Finally, just create a little delay so we don't see too many prints in the screen. After uploading the code to the Arduino, in the Arduino IDE, go to Tools and click on the Serial Monitor option. It will open this window on the bottom right corner. This is a small tool that detects data sent by the Arduino Serial and then prints it to the screen. As you can see, the Arduino is printing the value 0 because my pot is at the max position. When I turn the knob, it changes the internal resistance, increasing the output voltage. This value is read by the Arduino's ADC and then printed by serial to the computer. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe!